Confused about the cosmos? Can't tell a planet from a star? Then give us just five minutes, and we'll show you what they are. Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, director of the Miami Space Transit Planetarium, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. Stargazer turns 28, and the moon visits three planets and a lovely star in free dawn sky. Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. Yes, indeed. This week, Thursday, November 4th, Stargazer celebrates its 28th year on the air. Plus, the two brightest planets have a super close meeting, and next week, the moon will visit them and the returning not-so-bright Mars and the lovely giant star Spica. Let me show you. Okay, we've got our sky set up for this Thursday and Friday, November 4th and 5th, one hour before sunrise facing east, where the two brightest planets, 8,000-mile-wide Venus and 88,000-mile-wide Jupiter, will be side-by-side side in a super-close meeting, which we will not see again until the year 2008. And I think it's absolutely wonderful that the cosmos arranged to stage this super site to celebrate Stargazer's 28th birthday. At any rate, if you miss them on the 4th and 5th, you'll be able to watch them slowly pull apart from each other day by day. And next Tuesday, November 9th, see them joined by an exquisite 26-day-old crescent moon complete with Earthshine, which will look like a black full moon nestled within the bright crescent. But if you miss it on the 9th, you'll see an even skinnier crescent moon complete with Earthshine the following day, Wednesday the 10th, when the moon will have jumped from above Jupiter and Venus to just below them and will be just above the brightest star of the constellation, Virgo the Virgin, 7 million mile wide, Spica. You will also see something very dim just below and off to its left a faint pale reddish-orange object almost on a line with the moon, Venus, and Jupiter. Our old friend, 4,000-mile-wide Mars, which had its brightest appearance in 60,000 years in August 2003, but which is now 70 times dimmer. But it's still making news because two rovers from Earth are still sending signals back home. And if you really want to test your eyesight, then go out the following day on Thursday the 11th and extremely close to the horizon, you'll see an extremely slender sliver of a 28-day-old crescent moon, about as slender a sliver as you'll ever see, if you can see it. Once again, Tuesday the 9th, Wednesday the 10th, and Thursday the 11th. But once again, remember that even though these cosmic objects will look relatively close to each other, nothing could be farther from the truth. In fact, if we use the speed of light, which travels 186,000 miles per second as a measuring stick, next week, light from the moon will reach us in about one and a quarter seconds, while the light from Venus will reach us in 10 minutes. And almost twice as far away, light from Mars will take 20 minutes to reach us, while Jupiter, over two and a half times as far away as Mars, will need 50 minutes for its light to reach us. But Spica is way out there. In fact, while light from Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and the Moon all take less than one hour to reach us, it takes 275 years for light to travel from Virgo's brightest star. Which means that when you look at Spica next week, you'll be seeing the light that left it 275 years ago in the year 1729. Something to think about as you keep looking up. Jack Horkheimer's Stargazer is underwritten by a grant from Mead Instruments, the world's largest manufacturer of telescopes for the amateur astronomer. Mead telescopes automatically locate thousands of celestial wonders at the push of a button. It's astronomy made simple. 